Hello and welcome to the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel again. I'm going to cut straight to the chase and show you what we're going to be looking at today. It's not a magazine today, it's this thing. And no, it is not a thermos. Uh, there are no, There is no coffee in here. At least I don't think there is any coffee in here. Um, we may have a look inside it in a little bit. I have been warned that there may be some oil in here, but from the weight of it and the look of it, I don't think there is. And I have a feeling it's a little bit... It's a little bit temperamental and we'll have a look at this in a minute. So this is a resistive uh, decade box. It's like a, re a decade resistor. It's like a, something that you would plop in place of a resistor in a circuit if you can't choose the right resistance. And then you dial in the resistance. Oh, get in focus. And then you dial in the resistance using these lovely, like, adjustment boxes on top. This is not what they actually usually look like, to be honest. This one, I've never I've never seen one look quite like this before. It looks really interesting and it just piqued my curiosity to say the least. Usually you will you will, I'm sure you would have seen them before if you've seen something like this. This is a high one. It's uh, got four knobs and it goes up to I guess uh, 10k. It's a big resistor. So you prop in uh, the input and the output of the resistor and then you dial in the sort of resistance that you sort of want and hopefully it's working. Uh, I have a feeling both of these, uh, this one's a little bit temperamental. Uh, I think this one is a little bit temperamental as well, but first I'll just plug this one into uh, just a simple rubbish uh, multimeter. So I'm just gonna plop this on there, turn it off auto maybe killer ohms. So hopefully that is visible. Is that visible? Yeah, it's visible. So hopefully when I turn on the thousand, this, uh, when I turn this up to one, it'll go to around, I guess, I'm hoping, uh, one killer ohm. Let's, let's just guess. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Whoa, it ramps up. I mean, 0.9K. Oh, 1K, boom, boom, boom. That's weird that it ramps up slowly. Maybe it's the dirt from over these many years. The dirt has become some sort of capacitor in a way. Anyway, let's keep on flicking along. So number two. 2k, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, let's, oh, it's, it's sort of right. It's, it, this is old, it's temperamental. And I know, I'm, there's another thing before we go further, I must add that on this one it says, um, what does it say? Calibration not required. So uh, yeah, like apparently you don't need to calibrate this, but from the looks of it, it's not, it's not the best thing in the world. So let's go to three. Oh, the four. Oh, yo. No, oh, it's near enough. Five. Who? 4.9. Six. Oh. I have a feeling. I remember doing this before on this one. Six mega ohms. Wow, so something's not quite right or I'm misunderstanding. For some reason, I have a feeling it's broken past that point. That's probably why these things were for sale in the first place, uh, because they don't fully function. Anyway, we'll go back, I'll just flick it back over to auto mode. We'll try the hundreds of ohms. So I'll stick it on 100 ohms, see if those ones work. 100 ohms, uh, 200 ohms, 300 ohms, 400 ohms. Oh, oh, and then it goes a bit sketchy. 600, 700, 800, 900. 10 hundred. <laughs> so I'll bring that one back down. Uh, we'll go over to the uh, tens. So this should go up one on here. Oh, it's a bit, uh, this one's a bit sketchy. Maybe I'll change the range really quick. Go back to ohms. Okay, I'm on 20 ohms when I should be on four. Oh, yeah, so, uh, okay, so, it's not quite right, but what about zero, one, oh, oh, two, three, four. Uh, uh, I mean, it's sort of in the ballpark. It's not, it's not perfect by any means, but it's it's in the ballpark. Uh, we'll have a look at this in a little bit, but first we're going to go over to this decade counter and have a quick peek at what is going on here. The outside, this part, is a metal, well, it's a metal thermos, pretty much. And uh, yeah, the the, uh, the inputs are a little bit close, so alligator clips are a little bit unfriendly on this one, but it's not going to stop us from giving it a go. I'll just, um, right, oh, 240. See, this is a bit that confuses me about this. This is, if I turn this, Okay, so I don't, I just, the thing is, is where where does it start? My my immediate uh, thought is it starts here. This is zero. But when I was doing this earlier, it actually ended up when I turned this to zero. Let's turn this one to zero. It actually goes, actually goes up. 
for the action is going down. Unless I'm looking at this upside down or something. Maybe, am I being an absolute dummy? I don't know. Look, I've just, so I'm on zero now and it's gone up to not like nine. Nine, like I know. It's a little bit skew whiff, I've got to be honest. Oh, what's going on? I thought we should do, because they also have other inputs, use this as a voltage divider to be able to send uh, a voltage, are you ready, to uh, this fart box right here. So I've got this fart box, I've got to be honest, I actually blew this fart box up, it burnt, when I was, uh, I had it next to, I didn't have it plugged in, I was using uh, an opto isolator to plug it, to try and get it triggered uh, by uh, my um, Van de Graaff generator. But no and behold, they actually burn out a load of chips inside it, so it doesn't actually work right now. So the first thing I need to do is change all of the chips inside, which I think might be alphas, I hope they're alphas, in here. I hope they're copies of CEM chips. We'll find out soon. Anyway, this is the strip board version. This is the original one. Uh, so, oh, it smells like burning. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, the wonders of experimentation. This is the thing. I'm not that bothered about these things breaking personally because I built them myself. I'm not too precious about them. I like using them for things like experimenting and stuff. Even though they've took me an awful long time to build, you know, it's like, well, you may as well experiment. Break things, don't be shy. So I'm just gonna unplug this wire. Oh God, this is a mess. Okay, so, oh, the CEM chips, no. So I'm gonna quickly uh, change all of the chips. Obviously this is gonna make it out of uh, uh, calibration and whatnot, but I've just, it's enough to uh, show us what the sounds can do, even though uh, this will mess with the calibration, but I'll do this really quick. Out. Well, it definitely works, that's good. So now it is wired up. This comm and ground are connected straight to the ground of this patch cable. Uh, and then the tip of this patch cable, which is wired into the back, the uh, CV input, the first oscillator on this fart box, that is wired into the out. Uh, it's labeled out on this uh, voltage divider thing. And then the input, uh, I've managed to find on the back of the board uh, uh, something to, uh, banana like alligator clip off a 12 volt power supply. So now this is acting like a voltage divider and we can sort of see uh, how it affects it because now it's just like, it's sort of like a big potentiometer in a way. So if I turn up the uh, filter, you can hear it. So like, let's just uh, twist it and see which way makes it go up. That's really quite weird. I have a feeling this is this has seen better days. Maybe it just needs contact cleaning or something. I'm not sure. Still, it's quite strange because the higher the number goes, it seems the lower the resistance goes. Does this just seem counterproductive? Because this is opposite to uh, this one up here, which I found is not gonna act like a voltage divider, sadly. So it's not gonna work in this thing because this is just a, vo a, like a resistor. This sort of needs a, re a voltage divider to get the 12 volts down enough to actually be usable, you know, but. We'll have a look what's inside and I might just give it a quick uh, quick clean and see if we can improve it. Now to get it open, it has these tiny little uh, bolts on the side. Annoyingly, I don't have a, uh, annoyingly I don't have a wrench or anything that is that size. Actually, I've got an adjustable wrench. Mm -hmm. So I've got a miniature adjustable wrench, so we're just gonna do it this way. Uh, oh, oh, if I could get it going small enough, this is a very old and sketchy adjustable wrench. Looks like it's from a, uh, looks like it's from a, a like a, a Christmas uh, banger. Oi! Okay, so I don't want to lose these. I don't want to lose these. Where am I going to put them? I need a, I need a little shelf to plop them in. So let's have a look uh, what's going on inside. Obviously, like I said, uh, somebody warned me about them being full of uh, oils and stuff. So I probably should wear gloves. 
But as you can see, I've thrown that, that uh, suggestion out of the window. And on my head, so be it. Right, so we're undoing this now. It's quite strange, it's not a linear thing. Like the the mechanics in here should be pretty pretty cool because obviously it's uh, it's quite com complicated. Oh right, let's let's get this open anyway. Yes. Okay. Oh wow. Oh well that explains it, wow. So the resistance is, uh, yeah, coils, like they have very high accuracy, guessing that over time there is a bit of oil. I'm not gonna try, I'm gonna try and not touch it, even though I just did. So the smallest one is actually just a potentiometer. Yeah, so the center one is out. Uh, the, this is input and this is the com. This means it can act like a, a voltage divider as well. And, oh, that is so damn cool. The fact that they're like an axle within an axle. There's a big axle at the top. You can see the switch, which is switching between these right here. Uh, you can't really see the switch going. And then it go, Then the axle runs through this one and then there's a thinner axle that's uh, switching this switch in the middle. You can see that flicking through these uh, resistive, uh, seems like, yeah, wound resistors. And then at the end, there's another one in an even thinner axle going through that's going, selecting through these wound resistors. And like I said, if it gets in focus, the bottom is amazingly enough a, uh, yeah, just a, a simple potentiometer. That is the question and I just dropped one of the nuts on the floor. So now this one is back together. Uh, we may as well have a look, uh, you know, because it's out, because it's sitting out and about, we may as well have a look and see what's inside this big mama and see if, uh, you know, if the uh, technology and the, what if it's wire wound resistors yet again, or what is going on in the inside of this. Let's have a, let's have a quick uh, peek. Or immediately, you know, this is a lot more bulky. This is a lot more of an agricultural design, even though I don't think uh, there's much use for a decade resistor box in agricultural stuff maybe so actually maybe you need to calibrate your uh, your cow feeder or your cow milker or something I haven't got a clue so anyway well let's go off and have a look at what's inside this pie one uh, oh yeah oh my gosh whoa oh 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 there's a bit of a oh oh mama oh this one's a lot older but it's the same approach uh, wire wound resistors so if you look here we've got the same approach of wire wound resistors however this is now explaining why some of these were not working point one of them uh it it stops working so it seems to be at it was at six so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to find where number six was. It would start on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, one gets added to the next, gets added to the next, and that's how this works. So there is obviously a problem around here, uh, which is causing the, uh, the resistor to stop doing its thing and just being a broken circuit. And uh, this is not in the scope for the video today, but maybe maybe I might have a little peek. I mean, this one has been in a garage for a while. You can see like it's even got cobwebs and such, but it's actually, it's really bulky and really quite, really quite nice. It's just such a burly design. You've got the input, so it goes in and uh, one of them goes to this line and then they all connect to each other. They cascade down going up to the smallest resistance, which has the smallest amount of coils. If you look carefully, you'll see there's hardly any coils on these. And then there's a bit more coils on these ones. And there's even more coils on these ones. So that's pretty amazing. But alas, like I said, a few of them are a bit broken in this one. So it can't really be trusted. You have a look at here. They've got these tiny little service ports. Maybe it's for oil. I'm not particularly sure. It's not something in my knowing. Oh. So there's a little entrance in here that you can get to a screw that is on the axle. What that screw is for, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, leave in the comments what you think this screw entry is for. It's probably extremely obvious and I'm just not describing it very well, but I get really scared about touching this, but then I've got to remember that it's just completely passive. It's a completely passive item, so it's pretty all right, but it's just such a awesome design. So yeah, as you can see, this one is the one that I was focusing on in this video, but it's like, it's just so 
crazy and it's obviously a much more over-engineered version of you know this one which is just like a make do and do its job. Like I said I do a video every single week on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel sort of just looking at things in curiosity and uh, these are both in the collection of the museum and stuff which will be opening when this whole you know this whole fiasco is over so if you want to support uh, the museum there is actually the next video the next week's video so is already up on the Patreon so if you want to see the next video then it's already up and it's open to all patrons so whatever patron tier you can you can go and see the next video already if you click on the link below amongst loads of other vlogs and stuff including live streams uh, and whatnot so yeah uh, it will it, every single bit helps in uh, the machines and opening the museum and you know the bigger machines in the, on the look mum no computer YouTube channel anyway I've been Sam this is the museum of everything else this is a decade box and uh, yeah peace <laughs>